Okay, now let's look at some of the advanced troubleshooting features available in Windows 7. We'll begin with the system file checker, and there's a full guide to this in chapter 16 of my book, Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out, because it's just so useful. It's one of the most useful features in the whole operating system. You run it from the command prompt, which you need to run as an administrator, so right click on the command prompt icon and select run as administrator from the context menu that appears. Essentially what this does is it checks all of the files on your hard disk that make up Windows 7 and compares them against the original versions of those files on your installation DVD. If it finds any that are, uh, have become corrupt or are changed, then it copies the original file back from the DVD, replacing the one on your hard disk and essentially repairing it. It's done through one simple command, which you can see here, sfc space forward slash scan now, where scan now is one word. Now there's one caveat with the system file checker and that's service packs. If you have service pack 1 or service pack 2 installed in Windows 7, then you will need an integrated version of that self same service pack on your installation DVD. Now there are several ways to do this. Various pieces of uh, software av uh, are available online such as R7 Lite in order to be able to download, um, download these uh, service packs into your installation DVD or there are there are other ways there's a full guide in the book on how to slipstream a service pack into a uh, Windows 7 installation disk but it's it's a bit of a faff um, but if you're an enterprise user um, and you have an MSDN TechNet or other subscription you'll probably find that Microsoft will make available uh, an integrated uh, version of your installation DVD anyway that you can download. So the system file checker is absolutely wonderful and incredibly useful tool and a very very quick and easy way of being able to repair Windows 7. Then there's System Restore. Now many people wouldn't think of System Restore as an advanced tool but I've included it here because there's just so many ways to access it these days. You can get to it in the traditional ways through help and through the control panel but you can also access it directly from Startup Repair and of course there's three different ways to get into Startup Repair as well as we've seen in the, uh, previous, in the previous part too. So System Restore is very useful. Uh, viruses can't hide it in the way they used to be able to with Windows XP and it's well worth leaving it turned on. Um, its biggest use I found is um, actually for rolling back problems caused by Windows updates and uh, driver updates that have come through the Windows update service itself. When you think about it Microsoft have got to support billions of PCs none of which are the same so you're going to get driver updates and Windows updates that on occasion are going to cause a problem and it's uh, a great way of being able to roll back through uh, Windows Startup Repair uh, to uh, before those updates were installed. Then there's the Problem Steps Recorder. Now this began life as a tool in the Windows 7 Beta just to help beta testers give Microsoft more information on problems with the operating system when it was in testing. And it was so well received that Microsoft bowed to pressure and kept it in the final release of the operating system. Now you won't find it in the um, management console, you won't find it in the start menu. The way to get to it is to type PSR into the search box in the start menu. So what does the problem steps recorder do? Well, every time you click on something, when you're recording, every time you click on something or every time something changes on the screen, the problem steps recorder will take a screenshot. It will annotate that screenshot to highlight the area of the screen that is changed or the area that has been clicked. In addition to these uh, screenshots, with each one it will provide information directly under it in text on what's running at the time, what is happening, and it will provide all sorts of extra useful information. And it will save all these screenshots together with all the text descriptions in essentially a zip file that can be read later, read on a different PC, emailed to a support person, um, and so on. And it's a, a wonderful tool for being able to see exactly what it is that a user is doing on their computer when a problem occurs. So again, as I said, you access the problem steps recorder by typing PSR into the search box in the start menu. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about advanced startup repair. 
Now we've looked at the general startup repair options, the automated ones, system restore, system image recovery. Um, but there's a command prompt um, option available with startup repair and uh, this is one I want to look at here. Now there's all sorts of things you can do with a command prompt, um, especially those of you familiar with DOS commands, but there are some new ones as well. And here is a, uh, a short video I'd like to uh, to look at how we can use this command prompt scripting environment to repair all of the boot files in Windows when Windows itself can't start. Sometimes the boot files that are required for Windows 7 to load become corrupt and need to be repaired. To do this, you'll need either a startup repair CD or your original Windows 7 installation DVD. A Windows startup repair CD or DVD will take you straight into the Windows startup repair options, but if you're running the Windows 7 installation DVD instead, click through the first option where you're asked which language you want to install in, and at the next page, instead of pressing the install now button, click the repair your computer link. Once you're presented with the system recovery options menu, you'll want to click on command prompt. It's here that we'll be able to type the commands we need to rescue the boot files in Windows 7. Once you get to the command prompt, you now need to type the following commands in order to repair the boot files in Windows 7. This first command creates a backup of the Windows 7 boot menu. You can use this command with the import switch later on if you need to restore that backup. Now we need to navigate to the hard disk on which you have Windows 7 installed. In this case we'll assume it's the C drive though, on your computer it might be different. Once on that drive we need to navigate to the boot menu. Now we need to change the attributes of an important file. BCD so that we can perform actions on it. This command renames that BCD file to bcd.alt to create a backup. You can also rename the .alt file back if you need to restore that backup. Finally we use the bootrec command with the rebuild BCD switch. This rebuilds all the boot files for Windows 7. There are other switches you can use with the bootrec command that you may find helpful. FixMBR can be used to write a new master boot record in Windows 7. FixBoot will write new boot sector to the disk. And ScanOS can be used to search for any Windows installations on your computer. There's also the BCD edit command, which is used to edit the boot menu. So that's how we can repair corrupt boot files in Windows 7. Now back to the presentation. OK, now let's have a look at safe mode. Now, most people will be familiar with safe mode that you can access by pressing the F8 key to get into the boot options after the BIOS screen disappears but before the Windows logo appears when you're starting the computer. Now safe mode is very limited, um, it will start the computer without any third party services, drivers or software running, you have uh, limited networking capability, the screen resolution is set to its lowest. But there is an alternative and this is the safe boot diagnostic mode. Now you access this through the system configuration panel which uh, you find by typing msconfig which is one word, into the search box in the Windows 7 start menu. Now you'll see under the boot tab here there is a safe boot tick box. If you tick that we've got several options here. If you select minimal you'll just get into safe mode as you understand it. But there's uh, different options. Now by default just by ticking the safe boot mode we'll get a, uh, a boot scenario where you have your full screen resolution, you have um, driver support, but things like third party services won't run and uh, you can do, do you can perform diagnostics without uh, worrying that uh, things that were normally running in the background will cause problems. 
When you're finished with safe boot mode, then just remember to untick the box, go back into the system configuration panel and untick the box to get Windows to boot normally after that. Now let's have a look at device drivers. Now I've talked previously um, a little while ago about how device drivers can cause all sorts of problems. Now there are various things that you can do to uh, troubleshoot device drivers so let's have a look at them. The first thing is to roll back a driver. Now you can do this by right clicking on the driver itself, selecting properties from the context menu that appears and if that driver has been upgraded and there is a, a previous version that's been stored you can press the roll back driver button in the uh, dialog window that appears. Now if uh, you've only had one driver installed for this device then it won't allow you to do that but if you've updated a driver for instance and it's causing a problem you can roll the driver back to the previous version. You'll see here with figure number two that if you want to uninstall a device with some devices many of them but not all you'll see a little tick box here for deleting the driver software for the device. One of the biggest problems with previous Windows versions is that if you had a faulty uh, Windows driver and then when you uninstalled it the driver would still be there on your hard disk unless you went in and, and did a fiddly process to remove it manually and when you go to reinstall there was a danger that the faulty driver would be reinstalled. Now if you tick this box then all of that all of that uh, those driver files will be deleted from your hard drive and there won't be any chance that they can be reinstalled accidentally. Then there's hidden devices, and you'll probably be surprised just how many hidden devices there are in Device Manager. Now under the View menu in Device Manager, you can uh, select to show the hidden devices, and you'll be able to see uh, many other devices, any of which could be causing a problem with your computer. You can see there are other view types here as well, where you can uh, view devices by connection or resources by type and connection and it's here where you can also rev uh, review um, IRQ assignments within um, the devices for the operating system itself. Now let's have a, a look at the blue screen of death. Now many times when um, you get a blue screen of death which is increasingly rare in Windows and in Windows 7 but does happen the system will automatically restart before you actually get a chance to look at it and read the information on it. So if you go into the advanced boot options again press F8 when the computer starting after the BIOS screen disappears but before the Windows logo appears and select disable automatic restart on system failure which is uh, down near the bottom of the list then you uh, when you get a blue screen of death it will stop on that blue screen of death until you turn the machine off and turn it, and turn it back on again. So let's have a look at how we actually read the blue screen of death itself. Now there are two pieces of information that you need here and they're both, they're both uh, highlighted here. One of which, the top one, is the error name. The bottom, bottom one is the stop error code and there's more information after this stop error code as well. Now you'll see further down there, just under the stop error code, there's information on an actual driver that has um, uh, crashed in this case SP, uh, spcmdcon.sys and uh, you'll want uh, that information that, that's useful information but these two main bits of information are your your big clue and with this information you can uh, look up the uh, blue screen of death online and get more information on it now you try and you want to try and get as much information from the blue screen of death as you can because the stop at one stop error code can cover a whole range of different things and uh, and uh, it's important to have as much information as you can okay so that's the advanced utilities and in part four we're going to have an in-depth look at the power utilities available for troubleshooting windows 7